In this video, I will show you how to configure SecureCRT to use a public key to authenticate to OpenSSH. Here in SecureCRT, I have connected to an OpenSSH server with the SSH2 protocol using password authentication. I'll create a key pair using session options. In the SSH2 category, I'll make sure that the public key authentication method is enabled, move it to the top of the list, and press the Properties button. For this video, I'm choosing Session Specific. Now I press the Create Identity File button and the Key Generation Wizard appears. In the next screen, I am going with the default key type, RSA. In this screen, I can specify a passphrase for protecting my private key. Although it's a best practice to protect your private key with a passphrase, I'm going to leave it blank since I want to use this key for automated tasks. I'll enter a comment and proceed to the next screen. I'll stick with the default key length and press Next to generate the key and the Next button again once it's done. Since I'm creating a key for use with OpenSSH, I'll use the new OpenSSH format. When I press the Finish button, SecureCRT prompts to upload the key. I choose No since this upload mechanism requires support for RFC 4819, which OpenSSH does not yet implement. Two files are created, Identity and Identity.pub. The Identity file contains the private key. The identity.pub file contains the public key which will be copied to the OpenSSH server. To copy the public key, I'll right-click on my existing session tab here and choose Connect SFTP Session. This opens an SFTP connection to this same server. I'll cd to my .ssh directory. By the way, if you don't see a .ssh directory, go ahead and create it with the makedir.ssh command and then cd to it. Now. I'll drag the identity.pub file from my local Windows Explorer application and drop it into the terminal window of the SFTP tab. Now it's uploaded. To review, we created a .ssh folder in the home directory on the remote machine, and we uploaded the .pub file to that .ssh folder using SecureCRT's SFTP tab. When I list the contents of my .ssh directory in the terminal, I can see that the public key file that I just uploaded is there. Now, I'll add this public key to the authorized underscore keys file with this cat command. Next, I'll run two more commands to apply correct permissions as required by OpenSSH. So now, we've appended the public key to the authorized underscore keys file, and we applied correct permissions to that file and the .ssh folder. Now it's time to test the connection. First, I turn on trace options to see what is happening behind the scenes. And when I disconnect and reconnect, I'll see that public key authentication was successful. That's all for this video, and remember to stay secure, my friends.